Hey, what's going on? Joe here. You may notice things look a little bit different. Pam painted my studio, and it is shocking how much better it feels. So I'll, I'll put some B-roll here so you can see it, but the walls were all kind of this just regular old white, and she painted it this dark green that almost looks black, but man, as soon as I walk up here, like the ceilings that slope, they're still like the wooden panel stuff. We're going to leave that, but man, the greenness. I am feeling the green. So uh, I'm excited to make a video in my new cozy space. By the way, I'm thinking about hanging... Uh, I've got some extra gobos over here but because of the way we rearrange things. I'm thinking about hanging one or two up here. That's coming in a future video, I believe. So if you want to see that, leave a comment. Let me know. Uh, but today I want to talk about stock plugins. Why do we use it? Why do I use them? Like legit, hand to the sky, I use them all the time. And I have for over a decade. And the reason may not be what you think. So we're gonna dive in and talk about that because I got this question over on YouTube. It says, Joe, do you only use, do you, Joe, do you only, but I can't read, Joe, do you use only Persona stock plugins? I'm a fan of Fat Channel, but I gotta recognize that there are better analog emulations. Can you give me some advice, please? And that's from Mars Rivers. So Absolutely, I can give you some advice. Uh, and I got three things I want to kind of go over as we dive into this topic because it's important. And I think you're going to walk away better prepared to go work on your music because of this. So we're going to talk about the story of Pete. Uh, I'm going to talk about the what the professionals use. And then I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why stock plugins are actually a really good choice for your music. So first off, the story of Pete. So years ago, I had a buddy named Pete. And we would talk pretty regularly on the phone. And he was the kind of guy who would just buy guitars all the time, had a massive studio set up. He lived by himself in a house and had the, like the whole house to put gear in and put gear in it. He did. Um, and he would always rag on me about using stock plugins. So when I say stock plugins, I just mean the EQs and compressors that come with your software. So for me in Studio One, that's Pro EQ and the compressor that's called <laughs> Compressor. And that was all I would use. And it started as a way of just when I would teach this stuff in Home Studio Corner, I would use just the simple ones because that's what everybody has. If I start using all these really fancy plugins, then people can't relate and they're not able to do what I'm doing and understand what I'm doing. So why not use the simpler stuff? But it goes much deeper than that. We're going to talk about why. Um, so Pete would just rag on me all the time. He's like, bro, you got to stop using Pro EQ and compressor. You got to get some of these. I think he was using the UAD plugins at the time. He's like, you got to get those. You got to use them. And I kept saying, no, no, no. I'm happy with what I've got. I'm not, a, I'm happy with what I'm doing. I'm just going to keep using them. Well, finally I started using, I finally opened up fat channel, which is the, it's kind of like a, a rack inside of studio one, not the country Iraq, but a rack of a gear. And you can change out the different compressors and EQ. So there's a couple of emulations of really cool analog hardware, right? Um, so like FET Comp and Tube Comp and Vintage EQ, which I love a lot. If you've watched my channel much at all or taken my mixing course and you've seen, I use them a lot. So Pete was right to a degree uh, in that I did really enjoy the sounds I could get from these emulations that I couldn't get from the stock EQ and compressor. Those are like clean, pristine, surgical-ish, um, and I can get different cool vibes over here with the analog plugin. So I've done videos on them and why I like them. Um, but the takeaway point here, and the point I want to make to you, Mars, hopefully you're watching, uh, the person who asked the question, is just because something better exists doesn't mean that what you have is bad. That is the big takeaway point, let's get it tattooed on our foreheads, uh, just because something better exists doesn't mean what you have is bad. Like I've got, um, let's say you've got a $500 Stratocaster, made in Mexico, really nice Strat. Does the fact that there are two and $3,000 Strats mean that yours is garbage? No, not at all. Now, if you use like a hundred dollar one you got from Walmart, yeah, it, it's probably not going to do. You, although there are probably people who will prove me wrong, but at some there's a certain level of quality we have to get to. But when we're talking about plugins in the 21st century, they all sound great. None of them are slackers when it comes to just processing the audio. So the fact that something better exists does not mean that what you have is inferior, and it's going to take you a minute to really 
hammer that home, but it's true. You can make wonderful music using the equipment that you have now. And if you can't, the problem is you, not the equipment. I know I wince when I say that because it's harsh, but it's true. And one day, if you don't get it yet, one day you will, and you will email me and say, Joe, I finally got it. You've been saying it for years. I finally understand it. Uh, Because I've witnessed the opposite of this. So I've done lots of mixing courses and given my tracks to people to mix and things like that. And I've heard countless times people who will take good sounding tracks that I've recorded that sound great when you just pull them up and listen without any plugins. And they will proceed to run them through all of their fancy plugins and ruin the song. Why? Because the plugins aren't the point. Now, what you might be thinking, this is kind of on to our second part of the video, is with the pros, Joe. What about the pros? Yes, the professionals use fancy plugins. A lot of them have their own signature plugins. And they look cool and they sound cool. And I'm not anti them, meaning the pros or the nice plugins. But the reason the pros use amazing plugins and get amazing results is because they're starting with amazing tracks, right? If you get Jakir King to produce uh, a rock record for you and he sends it to you to mix, guess what? Granted, he would mix it himself, but if if he, you know, got sick and I had to mix it, guess what? Probably going to be a great mix because the tracks are going to be awesome because that's the whole point. That's the thing that we miss. We tend to think, Oh, it's the mixing that's going to make it great. But no, it's the it's the production and the recording. And then, yeah, don't mess it up in mixing, but you're not trying to fix things that are broken. Uh, another way of looking at it is quality begets quality. If you buy a really expensive car, guess what? You've got to also now pay for the expensive gas to put in the car. I don't put the expensive gas in my Toyota, but I'm also not driving a McLaren. There's a difference there, okay? So... If you're a professional working on professional music that sounds really good, then yeah, you might it might make more sense to use the high-end gear. But I'll say it again. If you can't make great-sounding music using just the stock stuff, again, the problem is not with the stock stuff. Okay, so what are the benefits of stock plugins other than what I've said already? Well, the first thing it does is it removes decision overload. So when I worked at Sweetwater, this is over a decade ago, one of the things a lot of the plugin companies would do at the time is they would give us what they call NFRs of their software, which is basically just a free license as long as you work there. Because the thought process was if I'm working on music on the weekends and I use their plugins and love them, what am I probably going to sell when I'm on the phone on Monday? Their plugins. So a lot of the sales engineers would have all of these plugin bundles installed. I went over to a friend's house one night, it was like a Friday night, and we were in the studio goofing around and he went to add an EQ to something we just recorded. And he goes to, this was in Pro Tools at the time, he goes to the little drop down, goes to EQ, and it usually gives you a menu of your available EQs. The menu took up the entire screen. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. It was at least several columns all the way across the screen of EQ plugins to use. Imagine having to make that decision one out of a hundred different plugins every time you go reach for something. It's maddening, right? It's way too much. I struggle with decision making and maybe you do too. Let's minimize the number of decisions we have to make so that we can actually just, I don't know, maybe just make some music. Another reason why, another benefit to stock plugins is if you're not spending money on all these other fancy plugin bundles, you can spend money on the front end where it matters. You can spend money on things that will help you get it right at the source. That could mean instruments. That could mean lessons. That could mean um, a better sample library. By the way, when I talk about plugins, I'm almost always talking about mixing plugins. I think buying new sounds that are creative and help you make music, I think that's great. But when it comes to mixing, that's where I'm talking about stock plugins for the most part. Although I tend to only use the stuff that comes with Persona Sphere with my MIDI stuff too, so maybe I am talking about that. Um, And another big benefit of using stock plugins is it makes moving from one system to the next very easy. I have had so many people come to me and say, hey, I upgraded my computer and my studio has been down for two months because I'm having all these issues trying to get all my plugins reinstalled. One person in particular emailed me about that and said, This plugin bundle isn't working, and I got to get the new license for this one, and this one won't install. And I said, Hey, are you using any of these plugins? And his answer was, No, but I paid for them, so I want to install them. 
I understand that. But if you're not using them, then just don't install them. And guess what? If you never had them to begin with, you can just, I literally, if I this computer keeled over tomorrow, I could pull in a brand new computer, install Studio One, and I've got all my plugins. And I can start working right away. That's not a Studio One feature. That's just a Joe Gilder feature of only using the stock stuff. Now, are there situations where I use third-party plugins? Sure. Would I use more if I had the opportunity or if I wanted to? Yeah. Well, I don't know because I get a lot of people offering me free plugins because of having the YouTube channel, and I usually don't accept it because I'm happy with the music I'm making. And I would much rather get in a room with Tim and Joel and write a new song and record that then spend a bunch of time just tweaking around with a plugin that might sound a little bit different to what I'm already able to do. Does that make sense? Okay, I hope so. Uh, if you like what you see here, I would love it if you would subscribe. By the way, we just hit the 200,000 subscriber mark, so thank you for that. That was fun. I actually hit it on New Year's Eve, which is kind of cool. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to my email newsletter, please do. Got a lot of fun stuff coming up this year. I would love for you to hear about it. You can get my recording cheat sheet uh, which is a free download, and then that will get you on the list as well. You can get that at recordingcheatsheet.com. Thanks for watching. See ya.